Alright everybody, I hope you guys are doing well. Today I'm testing a new angle that I have been playing around with and I'm going to be doing a watercolor. I'm going to be drawing some grapefruit because I was blessed by a fairy and I ended up getting a gift the other day and it had some bananas and oranges and grapefruit and I cut open the grapefruit this morning to have for breakfast and I just love the color so I took some photos of the grapefruit on my cutting board downstairs and I'm going to draw the grapefruit off camera and I'm going to use my new colored pencils to draw the outline because I don't want to use graphite for watercolor and the palettes I am using I made at camp in 2018 when I worked at camp and this was the first initial one I have my art name on I believe both sides and then there's just a really cool patch pattern and this was the first initial one I can't find the lids that I made with them to use to mix so I am using a palette paper to mix it blends in with the desk because my desk is white and I just recently painted my desk over so I have some really nice paints in these Palettes. The paints that I have in the palettes, um, I will show you. Okay, so the box isn't as nice because when I moved, it got all scuffed up. So this is one of the most expensive watercolors that I own. And the paints that I have in this larger palette are these paints. It's not every single paint color because there's obviously not that many little squares to pour the paint in but the paints that I have in this palette are these paints and I absolutely am in love with these paints they are just amazing and the way they flow is just incredible the light fastness is just amazing are starting to feel a little hard so I need to go through and check all these off camera but I love these paints so much so I'm going to be using these paints for the bulk of the grapefruit drawing that I will be doing today oh sorry I hit the tripod so that's one of the paints and then in the smaller one I am using my Shinhan. Again, the boxes aren't really as nice as I or initially wanted to try and keep them. Because um, this is an art studio and I've had like them in areas where paint can splatter on them. So, these are the paints that I am using in the smaller palette. Once again, not every single color, just the basics. And yeah. I am very excited for these paints. I am interested to see how these two paint formulas work together. So yeah, without further ado, I'm going to show you the photo that I am using for this particular drawing. The watercolor paper that I am using is the Canson XL watercolor paper from Walmart. I don't want to use my arches right now because I only have one one pad of arches paper left and I'm going to save those for uh, custom orders when I reopen. But yeah, I'm going to get to sketching out the outline of the grapefruits. I'm going to share a photo right here. So hopefully you were 
able to pause the video. You can pause the video when you see that photo and you can try and draw along with me. I'm going to try and have a, an outline for you guys to download and print onto watercolor paper or trace onto watercolor paper so that you can follow along with me. Um, I have some warm, fresh water here. I'm gonna go get another thing of water because it's always good to have two things of water when you're watercolor painting. So I'm going to locate my brushes that I want to use for this painting and I will show you brushes that I will make. So I don't think I will use every single one of these brushes, but the first one is a Royal and Long Nickel brush. It's a Zen silver handle brush and this does taper to a point once it's wet. It's not wet right now, it's all dry. I love this brush for washes and I am going to do a very light colored wash over the whole drawing once it's drawn. This is my Karen Dash brush that I got from my Karen Dash gouache. Set, which I will be doing a video on the Karen Dosh gouache. I may be using the white for the highlights after the painting is all dry. So we're going to be using that brush. So this I got from a local store. On, on the street that I used to work and it's very close by and they had a small art section and they had this brush in their brush holder that they had and I wanted to buy it because it looked like it would hold water very well and it definitely does and it definitely keeps its point so it's very good for details much like the Karen Dosh brush and I am using another Royal and Lignical Zen brush. This one also tapers to a point and it holds water very well. So this is also for a wash in smaller areas. And then finally, this is from that same store. This is a flat brush. Sometimes I like to use flat brushes for like really like intricate lines I go like that but yeah these are the brushes that I am going to be using and now without further ado I am going to draw out the grapefruits and I'll get back to you when I get ready to color the grapefruits with a watercolor so this is my current setup right now um, basically I have been fitting my phone right here and it, it stays I, like I don't even have to tape it down. It stays in place if I don't hit the desk. And um, I, I, I had to kick out the dog. I can't have the dog in while I'm doing this because he will nudge my arm and it could nudge the tripod and everything could just topple over. So this is a broken tripod. Um, yeah, story of my life. All my tripods always seem to just break. So, um, then again, I do buy really cheap tripods, but I'm still getting use out of this tripod. I did not throw it away because I always think I'm going to be able to use it somehow, and I finally figured out a use for it, and it's so that I can be able to show you better uh, what I am drawing. So, I'm very excited, and yeah, so finally... We are going to get to draw the I decided to end up using the water mixable watercolor pencils that I have because I feel like these will dissolve better while I'm painting and I will just use these colored pencils for finer detail in the end. But yes, I've had these since 2018 as well. Um, I got these while I was working at camp. I got them in an area of New York City and I don't remember exactly where but it was like a gift shop and they had these pencils and I definitely wanted to try these pencils out so 
I'm going to be using this color because grapefruit is like close to the color of grapefruit so I feel like it'll dissolve better. Also, I swatched both palettes. This is the larger palette. This is the exact colors in order so that I have it to reference from. And this is the small palette. This is the white. I mixed it with a little bit of color just for it to show up. But yes, this is the very small palette. Not very great color choices like the big palette, but I am gonna mix a lot of my colors. So the orange will definitely come in handy. But yes, I love both of these watercolors and I am very excited to share with them share with you how they work so let's get to it all right so i used the water mixable pencil like you see here to do the outline of the artwork and i did speed this up just a little bit and hopefully you can still tell what i'm doing i'm going to be mixing off camera because it wasn't in the best angle for me to also be able to share the mixing part of what I was mixing but right now I am mixing the red color of the great like the base color for the grapefruit a lot of what I'm gonna do right now is going to just be the base colors of everything details will come in uh, at the end and right now I'm just mixing a large amount of the grapefruit color and you will see the pencil dissolve very quickly which is why I decided to use the water mixable pencils instead of the regular colored pencils because it would dissolve the outline because I was going for more of a realistic artwork because realism you don't really see an outline like a black outline on anything so I wanted to make this as realistic as possible and it takes it takes time. I wanted to to say that that all paintings will have an ugly stage and you will see that in this video. It is not going to be perfect when you first start painting. So my best advice for you is to keep persevering through it. You don't have to paint it all in one go like I did here. Um, it technically wasn't entirely in one go. I did let it dry once all the base colors were laid down because I had to go replace my water because it was getting very dirty. And um, it's always good to keep your water clean when you're doing watercolors. I know it's very difficult to have to get up and go change your really dirty water but trust me it's better to have clean water instead of have dirty water to mutter mud up your colors so right now as you can see i am making this second one a little darker because this one was a little bit more in shadow it, because it's it's sitting up versus the other one which is laying down in the sunlight and uh, that it'll have a little bit more of a darker shadow. And right now I am starting to go in with a slightly darker color, same similar shade, but a slightly darker version of it. And I am going through and I am adding all the ridges and the detail, like it's gonna take layers. You're not gonna be able to get it all done in one go. And it's okay if it doesn't look right the first time. Like, if you start to not like it, just step away, take a little break, and come back to it and work out what you don't like about it. And you'll eventually get it to a point where you like it. And I'll eventually go around and I'll outline all the slices of the grapefruit. And then I'll just fill it in and I am going to leave little spaces so that you can see the the first layer show through and then I'm just gonna keep building up and building up 
darker colors until I get the desired effect that I want because there is a lot of like sunlight hitting on this grapefruit and at the end I am going to be using my uh, Caran d'Ache white wash to go through and really heighten those white highlights. Um, it's not going to be like exactly like the photo, but it's as close as possible as you will see in the end. And right now I am doing the cutting board. I am doing a base color of the cutting board first. I'm doing like the base of the shadow part, the base of the light colored part. And I'm going to go right over the, the light patch. That light patch up in the top right corner that you see where the pencil is. I'm just going to paint right over that because you will see at the end that I go uh, back through with the white gouache and I put that highlight in. Uh, it's not going to be as sharply detailed as the photo. I'm not going for photorealism. I'm going for realism as close as possible. And in the end, it does look very 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 close to the photo so right here I am using that Zen brush to go over I should have done this at the bottom too with this brush but I honestly completely forgot and I'm going back through now and I'm blending everything out I'm making it as smooth of a wash as possible because I don't want too much clouding going on which you will see at the end that there will be some clouding especially at the bottom but I like that effect so it's all varying on what you prefer when it comes to watercolor so I'm going to leave you with a bit of music and I will come right back when I feel like there's gonna be a time to explain what I'm doing so hopefully you enjoy the music part and I will come right back. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna go change my water and I'm gonna let this dry and I'm gonna get back to adding detail after the water is changed. So I got the base layer down for the grapefruit slices and the cutting board and when we get back, I am going to be adding the rest of the detail on each individual slice of the grapefruit. And it's very intricate detail, so do not rush and take your time that's honestly the best advice is just don't rush take your time think about where you're placing your colors keep looking back at your reference photo and match it as closely as possible as you can
so as you can see I started out doing like three slices at a time to fill it in and leaving spaces to where you can see the initial wash layers underneath and it starts to come together as you take your time and you go through and you keep looking and checking your reference photo and you place the colors where you see the values and right here I am actually using a very dark gray color and I'm going in the middle part which later I will end up going back over with the, the white because you'll see the, the ridges and right here I am adding the shadows of the grapefruit on the cutting board and you'll really start to see this come to life as I add more shadow as I darken things a little bit more you will start to see things come together try not to get it too dark initially just keep working it keep working the layers and the more you work it the more it will start to come together so like I did for the first slice that I'm working on right now, I'm going to do for the second and you will see that very shortly after I'm done adding the shadow on the cutting board and I'm not going to add every single detail of the wood grain. I feel like that would just take so long to explain. I will do a separate video for wood grain. I've just recently started to get really good at wood grain so yeah. Um, anyway, I am going to get back to the music and once we start working on the other slice, I will come back and give you a little bit more tips. So as you saw that I started to do the outlines of each slice because I feel a little more confident now after doing the first slice of the grapefruit. Now I feel more confident to be a little faster with this one and to make sure that I am keeping it up with the reference image and placing where I think all the lighter parts are and where the darker values are. and. It's really easy, it's really fun. Once you get into it, it it'll, be, it'll be very rewarding at the end once everything ties together. And you'll be very proud of yourself that you took your time and you followed your reference image as close as you could. And all it takes is practice. Practice, practice, practice. Um, I don't always draw food, but I've really gotten into wanting to draw food more often lately so you'll definitely see a little bit more food painting videos uh, I'm thinking of doing tomatoes next and somebody did give me uh, an idea on my last sketchbook quarantine a quaint housewife sort of gave me the idea to do a barrel of peaches because the barrel of flowers she asked if it was a barrel of peaches and I said well, it's a barrel of peach roses, but a barrel of peaches would be really awesome. So the quaint house wife, thank you for your um, tip. I don't think you meant to give me an idea, but I'm going to go with that idea. And my next quarantine sketchbook video will be me painting the barrel of peaches once I can find a good reference that I like and I could put together and and all that jazz so yeah uh, there's a little shout out to the quaint housewife because I've been watching her videos quite a lot and I keep saying it wrong it's the quaint housewife <laughs> sorry I do get a little awkward sometimes when I'm talking but yes um, the quaint housewife her channel is incredible so if you're looking for somebody new definitely go check her out and say hey that I sent you so yeah <laughs> Alright, um, I'm gonna get back to this painting. We are almost done here. 
and I will come back once I start to do the highlighting details because right now I'm just going through and adding the shadows on the darker parts of the slices because like I said the second slice is a little more in shadow than the first one but the first one does still have some shadows on it so I'm just refining things right now and sharpening things up a little bit more and you'll see me working on the cutting board a little bit so yeah I will come right back when the highlights start painting is done for the most part with the watercolor right now and I'm going to go through with my Caran d'Ache white gouache and I'm going to be using these two brushes to do the extremely white highlights. They won't be extremely white but I will get as white as I can. So I'm going to squirt this out directly on my little paper here. Not too, too much. Doesn't need that much. So one little dab. And I'm going to use this brush first. With a little bit of water in it. I'm going to load it with the paint. And I'm going to go around with this brush to the outline of each of the slices because if you can see on the photo, each individual slice has like a very faint white highlight, like white line. They also have highlights in the actual fruit part, but I'm going to go around and do this first. Because I think using a brush instead of my Signo gel pen would be easier.
It's important not to like go overboard with the white highlighting. Granted, if you do accidentally, you can easily just go over the gouache with a little bit of watercolor to darken it up. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I really hope. So I'm gonna do this exact same thing on both slices of grapefruit. All right, so we are wrapping up now. I am almost done with the highlights. And after I am done, all that's really left to do is to take the tape off. And that's my most favorite thing is when I take the tape off and you see that nice, clean, crisp edge on a painting. It's so satisfying. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was very informal. Um, I am intending on doing a bit more tutorials in the future. I think this is actually my first watercolor tutorial. Um, I don't remember ever making watercolor tutorials before. Uh, I know I've made watercolor videos before, way back when I first started. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. And if you would like to see more, definitely hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you can be notified when I upload my next video, which hopefully will be my charcoal portrait if I can finish it in time. And um, 
I will be doing some more quarantine sketchbooks. And also, it's also mermaid, so I will do a couple of mermaids this month as well. And yeah, so definitely hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell to be notified for when I upload more videos. And I hope everyone is doing well. I hope your quarantine is all right. I know we are all not on the same boat right now with quarantine. Some of us, it's like a vacation to others, it's not. And I, I just want to let everyone know that we will all get through this. And I know times are hard. I know you're struggling. I'm struggling too, but it'll get better. And we'll, we'll come out of this really strong and stronger than ever. So we'll, we'll get through this. I know I keep repeating that, but yeah. So I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you subscribe for more and I will definitely see you on the next one. All right, so this is where I'm gonna take the tape off and it's gonna be so satisfying when the tape is off. So, but yeah, I will see you on the next video and stay safe, stay well, and stay home. So, yeah. All right, guys. Love you. Bye. And just a gentle, quick reminder, the thing that you can do to help your fellow YouTube community is to watch their videos all the way through. Watch the ads as much as you can without skipping and join their channel if they have a join button or go check and see if they have a Patreon and see if you can help them over on Patreon. It'll help give us extra income and it'll help us want to make more videos. And it'll also help the community out with getting more entertaining content during quarantine because I know quarantine is very tough on a lot of us so I hope you guys stay safe I hope you guys stay well and thank you so much for all your support your support is really helpful in me wanting to maintain my channel and maintain making these nice long videos for you guys and I'm so glad that you guys love them and I do intend to make more, so definitely watch out for those, and I will see you on the next video. Please stay safe, stay well, and stay healthy. Alright guys, bye.